You may think that in the first half of Dragon Ball Z that it deviates from tournaments. Well, prepare yourself. Hey guys, Masako X here. The Freezer Saga. One of the most intense arcs and sagas throughout the entire Dragon Ball Z history books. It is the feather in the cap of about 100 episodes or so, which really signified Dragon Ball Z's intentions. Its statement that it would continue on with the adventure aspect of Dragon Ball, whilst leaving some of the comedy elements behind. Not only that, but they were going to be doing away with the traditional aspect of having tournaments every 20 episodes or so, and really just focusing on a really bigger and more epic narrative. And that was a pretty bold move on Toriyama's part. And this was a pretty big deal because this was really something that the fans had grown accustomed to. Ooh, controversial. So how do you keep your hyperactive hero going in some kind of story that doesn't have any kind of tournament aspect of it, even though he kind of grew up having tournament after tournament? Well, that's easy. You just disguise a tournament as something else. After our successful dissections of the Boo Saga and the Cell Saga, we are now going to be paying our attention to one of the older sagas, the Freezer Saga, and as well as the previous ones. You see, for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to be lumping in the Saiyan Saga as well, because it is what led to the Freezer Saga in some shape or form, as Toriyama was trying to figure out what he was going to be doing. It is technically the first chapter of an overarching story. It basically was the concept and the beginning of having aliens and space creatures within Dragon Ball that were not just on Earth. Other planets would be there too. It gives somewhere for Goku and friends to go in the long run. Before we go into detail of Z though, we have to really pay acknowledgement to the fact that the whole foundation of Dragon Ball Z didn't just come out of nowhere. That whole tradition of where the narrative would go all began during the King Piccolo saga. That completely laid down the groundwork because if you compare that saga to the previous one, the Red Ribbon arc, they are two completely different beasts. The latter arc was more focused on destroying the big bad rather than having an adventure in general, which led to an end point. Taking out the big bad, it was just the prototype of what would become all of the Dragon Ball arcs. So just think of this as Toriyama testing the waters. This full tonal shift was completely capped off with the fact that Goku was taken out five episodes into the new series. <gasps> Wait, what? Most of us got to see Dragon Ball Z as the first thing of Dragon Ball that we saw. We didn't get to see the original Dragon Ball, well, most of us, for another few years at this point. But back in the day, this was just like, okay, is this main character? Uh, okay, he's gone that way, what? And you also take out his brother too. What a wasted opportunity. But we gotta remember here, this isn't a Raditz discussion, unfortunately. And although we really know that Goku's demise wasn't really permanent, it was still pretty shocking at the time. And I had no idea that Raditz would just be the beginning of many new enemies that would come our way much stronger than the previous one. It was just all completely muddled in my mind. So going this route, not really having a tournament as it were in the traditional sense, was a very big undertaking on Toriyama's part. He was very much the believer of having tournaments in his stories. It's not just in Dragon Ball. Dr. Slump had its moments and, you know, it's something that you wouldn't associate with a tournament. Contests, something that could bring characters together to show off what they can do. Toriyama originally tried not to do this in Dragon Ball by having the initial Pilaf arc just be some kind of adventure. And that didn't really read well with the original audience at the time. I mean, it's really shocking to think that Dragon Ball wasn't popular at all initially. But then when he actually then caved and did the tournament aspect, that's when things picked up. The original Dragon Ball was indeed mediocre, as Toriyama explains in the original Daisenshu 2. Up until the Tenkaichi Budokai began, the series hadn't been all that popular. That's what Torishima-san had told me. Your protagonist is rather plain, that's why it's not popular, he said. Personally, since I was doing a fighting story for this series, I had intentionally made the protagonist's clothing excessively plain. So this annoyed me, but then I figured it out. Well, let's increase its popularity, I thought. When I had designed Goku's character, the words that best represented him were, I want to become strong. So I thought I'd bring that to the front. Even during Dr. Slump, the tournament-like events such as the Penguin Village Grand Prix or the mini event had been amazingly popular. So I'd simply make the story into a tournament format. From there, the Tenkaichi Budokai was born. I temporarily withdrew the other characters besides Goku, brought back Kami Sen in, Roshi, and added Kuridin as a new character. From there, it got popular before I knew it. So it was Toriyama going back to basics and it proved to be his ace in the hole. Going back to what he knew and what he did best and really appealed to Goku's original character model of I want to become strong, save the show. When in doubt, just put a tournament in it. It's proven to be rather effective even to this day in Super, even though it does tend to drag. 
In fact, most of Super is actually comprised of tournaments. We've got the Universe 6 arc, then we've got the baseball tournament. Well, I mean, it's the baseball episode, granted. Then we have the Tournament of Power, which goes on for nearly 50 episodes. And this wasn't all just some kind of cheap ploy mind or a method of convenience. These whole things were trying to appeal to the original modus operandi of Dragon Ball, proving characters can become strong and that they can show it off. It was meant to show off what Goku could do, and it really appealed to the Japanese audience, something they could get behind and something that they loved at Toriyama for decades. Be that as it may though, it's still a little bit stale. In fact, if you think about it, Toriyama never really deviated from the tournament model at all. We have the Cell games, we have another Tenkaichi Budokai in Z. So, it stands to reach Otherworld Tournament! Otherworld Tournament! Can't forget about that one. It's really, really logical if you look at the entirety of the initial half of Dragon Ball Z. That is just one big tournament arc, just under our noses. It was staring us in the face all along. The Frieza saga, and maybe the Saiyan saga, was just one big contest. This whole thing is much like an arcade survival mode, rather than your traditional round tournament where people are eliminated and you go up the ranks and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of like what the Cell Games was. Maybe this is what inspired the Cell Games. You have to go through each and every Freezer minion, each one getting stronger and stronger progressively until you get to Freezer, the main big boss. So this is where the series experiences a rather big power creep ladder because it's acting like a tournament. Characters getting stronger and stronger and we all know how much we fans don't like power creep. And no, don't worry. We're not going to be delving deep into the quagmire that is trying to discuss power levels. As much as I really like statistics and talking about numbers and data, this isn't a time or place to get bogged down talking about numbers and comparisons and stuff like that. We're talking about whether the Freezer Saga might have actually been a tournament arc all along. That's what we're talking about. Because it just cements the whole idea that Dragon Ball Z isn't really about adventure anymore. It's just about people hitting each other. It's more action adventure rather than adventure action. And sometimes even the whole thing about hitting people takes about 18 episodes or so. Granted, we are traveling to different planets, so it's an exotic approach to the old formula of just being on Earth. But if you think about it, the planet that we went to wasn't exactly all that exotic. Namek was just a big green garden with green skies and green grass and trees and stuff like that. It was basically, if you change the sky from green to blue, it could have easily been Earth. Okay, the buildings were slightly different and the vegetation was slightly different. But other than that, it doesn't really scream out SPACE to you, does it? But this isn't to say that the Freezer Saga didn't have its memorable moments. Oh no! It's quite easily one of the most iconic arcs in the entire franchise. It was especially important in terms of the franchise's development. It really set up many of the tropes that are common to this day. And besides, the filler that we might see in that saga was not really a waste of time. It was a necessity. Because back in the day, we didn't really experience this. The difference between the manga's release and the anime's release was only about a couple of months. If Toriyama didn't have that buffer that the anime gave him, things might have had to take delays or hiatuses. And we don't like hiatuses here. You know, we don't want to have that happen. It might spoil the trend. That's a little too tight for anyone's liking two months, especially the likes of Toriyama, who doesn't really like being bottlenecked by many timelines and deadlines and stuff like that. He is not someone who would really respond well to that. So I think as a result, this affected Toriyama's creativity. So it meant that our trip to space wasn't all that attractive. So most of the time while we're in space, we are just going into one big tournament arc. In space! But Masako! Dragon Ball Z is all about fighting! Why is that suddenly a bad thing? Well, we're not trying to be overly critical here. We're just stating a fact. And we really got to give credit where credit's due because the first part of Dragon Ball Z was the thing that got people hooked onto the franchise in the first place. We can't discredit that. The whole Goku Vegeta thing, as well as the training up to that event, was absolutely monumental and nothing like we'd seen before. It was groundbreaking in the West and it really, really cemented the foothold that it had in foreign markets outside of Japan. It was necessary and vital for it to be the way it was. I'm not wanting to change it at all. But now that we have the pleasure of hindsight, as well as having things like Dragon Ball Kai to be able to condense things, going back to the original is a bit of a chore in comparison. Therefore, you could consider it a drag, but it's a vitally necessary drag. What made the Freezer Saga so great was because it contrasted very much from its bland settings. It was almost like it didn't want the backgrounds to distract anything from the main narrative and the story. So therefore, the background would just get out of the way, so that means you could just tell the story. So okay, I get that, and that is a very good technique, but 
it does make things boring when there's not much going on. So okay, one way to get around things is to make the whole freezer force absolutely colourful and spectacular. That's what we got with the likes of the Ginyu Force. We got other freezer minions who looked absolutely grotesque and weird and different. Then again, the Ginyu Force, who look absolutely spectacular and flamboyant and absolutely memorable. They are unforgettable and they are all very likeable in their own way. Which is something that really super took to heart with the Tournament of Power and coming up with nearly 80 different fighters. If you think about it, the Freezer Saga and the Tournament of Power Saga are a lot more similar than you think. Both of them have a wide range of minor characters with very special and unique powers, unlike what our traditional casts have, and it just is used in a very unusual way. It was something to show that there was some diversity in the story and to kind of hold off Freezer for a little bit more, so that means we don't, you know, kind of go immediately all out too early. It's actually really funny to watch these two sagas side by side and compare them because they are even more similar. They go on for far too long. They make you really bored of the backgrounds in the world that they're in. And I'm sorry, guys, changing your world of void background from black to a really soupy green doesn't make it interesting. The thing is, however, that this was all back in the early days of Dragon Ball when Toei could really take risks. Toriyama could take risks because he hadn't established the icons that Dragon Ball would eventually become. He could set new ground and not exactly make mistakes, but more like have some developmental issues. But we have to really sit back and pay tribute to the fact that it kept us going in the West especially, with having us a really big loop of having to go back to the beginning when Goku shows up and then back to the start again and again until Funimation took over in 1998. It meant that there was something about the Namek saga and the Frieza saga that kept people invested. Then again, thanks to the experience that Toriyama had as well as Toei, they were able to help conjure up some kind of interesting side characters to keep things interesting before we get to the main events. At this time, we could just focus on what Dragon Ball Z wanted to do and have more actions. We can get back to the more character-driven plots in the Cell Saga when things had settled down and Dragon Ball Z had really gotten on its feet. So although it turns out that the Freezer Saga was just a very, very well-disguised tournament saga, it doesn't cheapen it in the slightest. Okay, you could also describe it as a baddie pyramid saga, but it was a vital thing for what was coming next in the show's future. And yes, okay, it may be harder today to watch the original uncut version and instead go to the Kai version of the events, but you gotta really love that saga for what it did back in the day. It, dictate, it dictated a whole new direction for the franchise, for better or for worse. So what do you guys think? Do you think the Freezer saga feels like a big tournament? Do you think the original uncut version really stands up today? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you later.